are wrinkles. That's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post-sugar rice crinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice crinkles is crinkled with honey and sugar. What matters to me is that the state brought charges, a trial was conducted, evidence was heard, testimony received, the jury deliberated, they reached a verdict. And I have to respect that verdict as well. There is, um, there's nothing more that's going to happen here other than a sentence for you, Mr. Stewart, and a sentence for you, Mr. Simpson, based on the evidence that occurred in this case. My sister, Kayla, and I were inseparable. We literally do everything together. We eat together, we sleep together. We're never apart. We're attached at the hip. Sometimes I do feel like we are twins. Straight, like cross. Kayla usually drives me around everywhere because I lost my license. Hey. Business? Ninja's business every day, all day long. How many? How much? We could be in the car from 9 in the morning till 9 at night. I mean, it's like a full-time job driving her around. I don't like doing business, but I have to to get money. It's the only way I can. Like, even if I had a steady job, I wouldn't make anywhere near what I make doing this. My goal... Is your work email password the same as your regular email password? It is. Don't say it out loud. It's Edward, all lowercase. Oh, my God. Great news. Premieres Tuesday after the voice of NBC. Job now, um, why you left, or you know, so on and so forth. 
Well, the last job I had was community service. Okay. I had to do it for 90 days. Okay. So once it was done, I was done. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to stick around. What were you doing the community service for? Well, I got in a situation where, you know, I got in trouble with the law. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And, you know, I used to do a lot of stuff. I ain't gonna lie. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm trying to get my act together. You know what I'm saying? On the strength. Right. And just try to go to, on the right path. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Um, you know how long it's going to take, though? Uh, it's going to take just a few minutes. All right. I mean, no okay. problems. No uh, problems. I mean, I did, like, part-time labor. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, I'm in a frat. You could say I'm the shit, but I don't, I don't really like to put it that way. A lot of guys say, you know, frat, frat guys are douchebags. But, I mean, come on, that. Do I a fucking douchebag? No. You think a douchebag would get this many fucking bitches? Because I don't. I don't think so. Fuck that. But I mean, whatever. We all have haters. I don't give a fuck. Think of it like, like this bag is, is, is full of all my fucks. You're not, you're not getting any of them. You're not getting any of them. Today's video is gonna be so freaking hot and important. Someone once said, when a woman finds a man who gives good head, she's found a treasure she's not going to let go of too quickly. This is one rare customer and she knows it. She won't even tell her girlfriends about it or that guy will become the most popular man in town. So if you want to become the most popular guy or girl in town, then this video is for you because I will share with you my 8 secrets to make any woman feel like in heaven with only your tongue, lips and fingers. So let's get it started. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. Before I share with you my secrets, let me share with you some interesting thoughts on our sex here. In ancient times, it was well known that giving our sex to a woman was a highly healing, empowering and honorable practice, helping a man... Hello? Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm calling about the, the ad that you got up on Craigslist. like a dresser or some kind of furniture? Well, I have a high boy dresser and nightstand. The other dresser I sold. Well, look here, ma'am. I don't need no dresser, but you know anybody that want to buy a snapping turtle? Busy you, in and out of doors every day. Think how much dust and dirt settle on your skin. And makeup clings to your skin, too, and clogs pores. That's why your face needs a thorough cleansing each day. And that's why cleansing tests were made by an independent testing laboratory. This same kind of dirt was made just radioactive enough to register on a Geiger counter. Leading cleansing creams, complexion soaps, and Dorothy Gray Salon Cold Cream were used to remove this dirt. The Geiger counter proved that Dorothy Gray Salon Cold Cream cleanses up to two and a half times more thoroughly than any soap or other cleansing cream tested. Who said the treatment of the American Indian was a national disgrace? The American Indian is a national disgrace. Uh, well, uh, Geronimo? <laughs> President Kennedy. What? That's a lie. Kennedy never said that. Or maybe he said it, but he didn't mean it. He, he maybe said it when he was running for office. He's trying to get the Indian vote, but he never got any of that. How do you know? Because, me, that the Indians don't vote. Oh, Archie, the Indians were given a vote in 1924. I ain't talking about that. I'm saying that they don't use their vote like the fella told me. Today's secret word is that. 
What do we do? phenomenon makes me sad. I thought he was much too ridiculous and absurd for people to take him seriously, and somehow they have, and um, it's puzzling, mostly puzzling to me because the type of people in the United States that I think take him seriously are people that feel really disaffected by the government, and they're having a hard time, and they can't get work, and they don't trust the government, and you know, I don't trust the government either, but there are people who are having a hard time, and they're um, poor, and they can't get work, and they're unhappy with the economy, and they see him as a guy that can help fix it. But the truth is, this is just, I mean, this is a guy, like these are poor people, and Donald Trump is a guy that was born rich, was given money, has only ever cared about anything in his life, about getting as much money and power as he can get for himself. He's never been a philanthropic or kind person. He's never cared at all about the poor people in America in any way. And that now all of a sudden they think that he wants to take care of them. He's, it's, that's the part that I don't understand. Um, but it just makes me sad, really. Um, yeah, he's like some idiot talking in a bar. I think there should be more, I mean, I don't know how it is here in Germany, but in the United States, I just think there should be more money flowing into education, period. I think it, you know, we should stop spending money on wars and start spending money on educating our children and have people growing up, you know, and I think that the, the balance of education should be balanced equally between arts, academics, and athletics, you know. All kids are different. Um, for myself, I'm a musician, and when I was a kid in Los Angeles, we had a pretty good music education available for people who did, whose families didn't have money like mine. I mean, I come from a poor family. So um, I did what I could to, um, to, to, I started a music school in Los Angeles, 
and um, uh, it's a non-profit music school that I started about 14 years ago, and um, it's in Los Angeles, and we have 700 uh, kids there learning music, and it's not about being a rock star or being famous or anything like that, it's just about studying music and um, learning how to technique and reading music and playing in an orchestra and singing in a choir. And ¡Ah, 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 